So this morning we have Representative John Bell. John is the majority leader in the North Carolina House. He's serving his third term. He's a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington and is manager of, the, uh, manager of sales and business development for North Carolina Community Federal Credit Union in Goldsboro. He's no stranger to the needs of local government as his, as his father-in-law, Joe Gurley, serves as Wayne County Commissioner. Is Joe here? Joe, is Joe, Joe with us? I'm just trying to help the man out with his father-in-law. That's all. Uh, we'll be celebrating 40 years of marriage this year. I know you need all that. You can stay in good graces with a father-in-law. So it's my honor to welcome the Majority Leader of North Carolina House, Representative John Bell. John? So good morning. Um, you don't get Senator Brown, you don't get a speaker, you get me. So, uh, so uh, for those of you who are disappointed, I'm sorry. For those of you who are happy, thank you. Um, for those of you who just applauded to be nice, I really appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, and, and my, and my father-in-law is not here today because uh, he actually came up early and took half of my day to let me know everything that was going wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I've learned doing this job, I'm, I'm very appreciative of compliments. I uh, don't get that many, but uh, I, I do get a lot of issues, and, and you, can, uh, you, you can imagine uh, the dinner conversations we have ar around the table. I, I actually had the, uh, the honor of um, speaking at my father-in-law swearing in, and I told him that I was very happy for him, and uh, now the congratulations are over, and the swearing at has just begun. So, uh, so, but, but I, I, I'm very happy you're here today. I have the distinct honor of representing uh, four counties in eastern North Carolina, Craven, Green, Lenore, and Wayne County. Uh, I'm in my third term here in the General Assembly, and at the end of my second term was elected to House Majority Leader, which is uh, it's an honor to serve, but then to have your colleagues elect you to a leadership position is, 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 is a real big honor. So I take that honor very serious. And as you know, we've been very busy since we've been up here in Raleigh. I came in in January. We have a lot going on. Just want to give you an overview of what you're going to see today, just so it doesn't catch you by surprise. Uh, so if you haven't watched the news or haven't seen TV, uh, the Senate rolled out a budget last night. Of course, we'll review it, and we'll tell them thank you, and then we'll make it exactly the way you want it. Um, no, I'm just joking. They, they, they put together a, a, a good budget, and we're going to look through it, and, and we'll have some differences of opinions there, and, and we'll work at the differences, and we'll go into conference. And hopefully, especially for, for your concerns, uh, our, our goal on both chambers is to be out of here by the 1st of July. Uh, we say that every year. Sometimes we, we accomplish that. Sometimes we uh, I remember what July was like when we we're still sitting here in September, but, um, but hopefully that will not, not happen again this year. But I, I, our, our budget chairs are hard to work. The Senate will, has rolled their budget out. We'll go through that process uh, looking at what they put together. Uh, our, conference chair, our, our budget chairs are meeting and have been meeting, and so uh, we'll get right to work as soon as the, the budget gets over to us, uh, hopefully by the end of this week, first of next week. But uh, a lot of issues that we, we've been addressing here in the General Assembly is, are, are very complicated and issues that you face every day, especially my friends in rural North Carolina. How do we continue to, to support our metropolitan areas and want them to grow and expand and be prosperous but not leaving our rural North Carolina areas so far behind? And so whether that's through uh, transportation infrastructure, whether it's through infrastructure period, a lot of you at the county level uh, deal with, uh, deal with uh, small communities and municipalities that have uh, infrastructure that, that was put down during the Civil War and hadn't been replaced since. And so how do we continue providing the, the, the same services to those citizens uh, and, and what they expect? And so, so we do have issues there. How do we continue to grow our education system? Uh, K-12 is the backbone and foundation of everything that we do. We can have the best, best tax policies here in the state of North Carolina, but if you don't have an educated and, and willing workforce to work at the companies and factories, then, you know, we're, we're, we're lagging behind again. How do we expand broadband Internet and, 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 you know, get the folks in rural areas the ability to be able to compete? And uh, we used to say in a statewide economy, a nationwide economy, but now we're competing in a global economy. So these are the issues that, 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 that we, we face. And uh, how do we continue with our school construction? It's been a big concern of yours for many years. And how do we continue uh, supporting you through, through the lottery funds to get the debt service and school construction needs met that you have? 
And so these are all issues, and we welcome all ideas to the table. We have 120 members of the house. They're all Taipei personalities, and no one's wrong. So if you want to throw some ideas in there, uh, you know, we'll be more than happy to consider those. But uh, we do have a good group of Republicans and Democrats uh, working across the aisle, working together to do what's best for the state of North Carolina. And I'm proud to be one of those 120 members that get to, to, to serve you, the citizens of North Carolina. Uh, and the last thing I will leave you with, because I don't like speaking too long, uh, is, is this. I, I get this question a lot, especially when groups come through, uh, whether it's county commissioners, whether it's city leaders, whether it's community leaders, uh, business leaders, is how do, we, how do we continue to work together? And that's the key, because whether you live in downtown Raleigh, downtown Charlotte, or in Pink Hill, North Carolina, we all have to work together. Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated, we all have to work together to do what's best for the citizens of this state. That is key, and communication is key in doing that. So if we're not working with our local elected bodies, if we're not working with our county commissioners, if we're not working with our school board, we can't address all the concerns. Now, we're not always going to agree, but we can agree to disagree and move forward and do what's best for the state of North Carolina. And so I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you take in, taking an active role in the association. You have a wonderful team that represents you. And by the way, if we ever file anything that's a concern to you, we know in less than 24 hours because Joanna will pop through my door and say, oh, we got to talk about this. So, so, but you do have an outstanding team that represents your interest here. Uh, it's wonderful to see you here. Our office is always open because remember, we work for you the citizens of North Carolina. So thank you very much for being here. I look forward to seeing you around the campus today. And um, I'm going to go back to work. So thank you all.